For hundreds of years, people controlled the inheritance of certain characteristics by selective breeding. Farmers selected traits for animals and plants they wanted and breeded the same with dogs or horses. The dogs we have today, the cattle we farm, the vegetables we eat, they all look like they do due to hundreds of years of being selectively bred. Selective breeding is low tech, simple and cheap. However, it is also very imprecise as about 40% of the genome is altered with each cross. This means you are not guaranteed to produce better offspring and many alleles are selected for inadvertently and some of them may be harmful. These harmful alleles will become more prevalent with future generations of breeding along with the desired characteristics. So we're not only keeping the good genes in, but we might also be keeping the bad genes in. For example, look at these particular issues with pedigree dogs. You've got difficulty breathing in these Pekingese, you've got uh, eye problems and skin problems and uh, difficulty giving birth for the bulldog there because their head is so large it won't fit out the pelvis anymore. So all these problems that we have here in these pedigree dog breeds are there due to selectively breeding in uh, recessive traits. Now. We have a new way of altering organisms. It's called genetic engineering or a combinant DNA technology. Genes from one species can be isolated and transferred into another. It has many advantages and potential benefits, but in this diagram you can see that it addresses the main issue that we have with selective breeding. At the top there you can see selective breeding where actually half of the, 40% or, or so of the genome is, is transferred um, from each of the two parents. When with genetic engineering, just that one desired gene shown by that orange dot can be transferred into the organism that we want to. So we can, we can, only, we can introduce just that specific gene. So what are the potential benefits with genetic engineering? Well, guaranteed trait will have the desired effect. More cost-effective crops with a higher yield could feed expanding population. Less land needed for farming means habitats can be protected. Genetically engineered pest-resistant crops will uh, reduce the need for pesticides and their impact on the environment. Uh, can make more crop, crops more nutritious, better tasting and healthier. Characteristics can be produced that would never happen in nature as the genes can cross the species barrier. Uh, and we could potentially make cheap mass-produced medicines in this way, and vaccines could be delivered in food in this way. So there's all sorts of potential ideas and benefits that we could have if we, uh, if we carry on with the uh, technology of genetic engineering. However, there are also many concerns over genetic engineering, and these fall into sort of three categories. You've got the, the concerns around health, uh, which are things like the un, uh, un unpredictable long-term effect on people's health of consuming uh, genetically modified crops, for example. Um, new proteins produced could interact with other proteins and have unknown effects that we, we can't predict. Uh, there are the effects on the environment. Um, it would reduce biodiversity potentially, produces less new varieties than selective breeding would do. Uh, there could be unknown effects on the food chain from, other, from organisms eating genetically modified crops and being passed down the food chain. And new genes introduced could cross into wild varieties through pollination, uh, which we can't control. And then there are the sort of social, economic and political concerns. It, it, you know, that it is expensive, this technology initially, to, to get it working and, and to make it uh, viable. Also, um, it benefits big sort of biotech companies more than local farmers. So, the aim of genetic engineering is to take one gene out of one organism and insert it into another so that it is expressed. The DNA with the added gene is known as recombinant DNA. And the organism with this RDNA, as it's called, is a transgenic organism or genetically modified organism, GMO. We will go over each of the following steps in plenty of detail in this presentation, but essentially these are the four stages of genetic engineering. First, you've got to identify the required gene and isolate it. Then make multiple copies of the gene using uh, the polymerase chain reactions, so copy it lots and lots and lots and lots of times. Then once you've got lots of versions of it, you can then insert it into a vector, which is something that you can use to deliver the gene to the cells of the host organism. And finally, once it's in the host organism, those cells uh, need to be identified and cloned many, many times. Now, in order to do this, a genetic engineer is going to need a toolkit. They're going to need some enzymes, which we'll talk about. They're going to need vectors, and they'll probably also need some marker genes.